Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. By the way, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel, very important. So based on all the amazing questions that you guys are sending me on Instagram that I have been answering on my Instagram live sessions, some of those questions are actually really good. And so I decided to collect them all. And I have a huge Word document with all of them and split them up into these different categories and actually put them into a YouTube video so that they can be here permanently for my YouTube followers like you. So today, Today, as an inaugural one, we are going to start off with dining etiquette. And by the way, if you have any questions on dining etiquette how to's, please drop them in the comments below because I want to know and I will answer them, I promise. And if yours is a really good question, I'll even create a little video just on that. And by the way, if you are not already taking part in my Instagram live sessions, please follow me on Instagram, same handle at Sarah Jane Ho. And so you can follow me both on YouTube and Instagram. Okay, so let's get into these questions. We'll start from five. Melcher asked, how do you get the last bit of food off your plate and onto your fork? Do you use your knife? Question mark. Do you use your fingers? Question mark, question mark. Well, this really depends where you are and who you're with. If you're at a very formal dinner, a black tie, or having dinner with a queen, or in front of a business client that you know, you're know you meeting kind of for the first time, then ideally I would say, let it be. Let that last bit of food, just let it be, you know? Let's not try too hard and go to too many lengths to get that little bit of mashed potato or to get those last two or three peas into your mouth. Also, at really formal events, we shouldn't really be using our fingers at the meal. So in that case, I am prepared. Let's say there are some really tricky bits. Let's say you really want to eat it, you just cannot let it be. Okay, then what you should do is, and I understand which ones you mean, sometimes it's like you're trying to scoop like this and you're unable to scoop and it keeps falling off of your fork. Well, then what you should do is you should scoop it onto the back of your fork. Fun, right? So you use your knife, scoop it onto the back of your fork and then make sure it doesn't fall off off and bring it to your mouth. That is the most polite way to do it. Now, if you're with good friends or you're on your own or you're with family, it's totally fine to use your bit of fingers. Or even the French. The French just do things so naturally. I love it. Uh, the French love to take a piece of bread and mop up the last bit of gravy or the last bit of garlic sauce that's in that escargot. So good. So there you go. All right. Question four. Emily Parker.jpg asked, what to do if you suddenly become ill at a dinner party? And you know what? Funny that Emily Parker.jpg asked this question because literally a month ago I was in Beijing at dinner with two friends and one of my friends got literally suddenly very ill. And it was actually as we were walking up the stairs to go to the restaurant, he bent over in pain and all of a sudden had the stomach pain and he apologized, but he still came to dinner. And then, you know, the three of us were chatting and every, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so he'd say, I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not being too poor company. I'm in a lot of pain, blah, blah, blah. Powered through dinner and then left after dessert. Now, now, kudos to him because he managed to power through the thing. Of course, if you're suddenly ill at dinner, it really depends on what level of ill. If it's a slight level where let's say you're just getting the sniffles and you know when you feel a sudden cold come on and you're like, oh, you're starting to sneeze and yes, you're sneezing a lot, don't leave the dinner. But I mean, if you're having this split your, you know, some internal organ, which happens, then you shouldn't stay at dinner because that could get pretty serious. Maybe you ruptured something, sounds awful. But if you can power through it, if you don't think it's that serious and you can power through it, do that. This really depends on your own pain radar and pain level of pain tolerance. But if you're with close friends, you can definitely say, oh, you know, I'm feeling a little unwell, like blah, blah, blah. If you're at a formal dinner or let's say, you know, somebody's engagement party, don't make a huge scene, don't cause a huge fuss about being sick and don't tell too many people because the attention is supposed to be on the birthday boy or on, you know, the couple that's getting married, not on you and your stomach ache. So maybe, you know, tell a close friend if they're beside you or tell the person sitting next to you, but definitely do not make a scene. And if you're totally doubling over in pain, then immediately tell the host, be like, I'm so sorry. I have this sudden pain. I think I need to go to the hospital or getting the runs. I need to go home. Then just do that as discreetly as possible without making a scene. Okay. Question three, nina.jenkins.xo asks, what do you do while people are singing happy birthday to you? That is actually a really good question because we've all been there. This is one thing that all of us, no matter where we're from, I mean, we all have a birthday and we've all had a 
a birthday dinner or party, there's been cake and people are singing to us. And we all know how awkward it is. You're sitting there and all you can do really is just sit and smile and look happy and look pretty or handsome. Because yes, they're singing the song, happy birthday, dear Sarah. Da -da. And then just wait till it's done and then blow out your candles. Well, make a wish and then blow out your candles. But sit and smile and look at the cake. Just look at the cake. Okay, now question two. Ananya Jith asks, how do you eat dumplings gracefully? Well, guess what? I am going to, this is a really good question. So I'm going to tell you here, but I'm also going to do a video with a real dumpling. I'm going to find a real dumpling. We, when we eat Chinese food, we have our chopsticks and we have our sp Chinese spoon. And when we eat a dumpling, firstly, especially if it's a xiao long bao, which is my absolute favorite. Xiao long bao are known in Shanghai. They're a delicacy in Shanghai. And xiao means little, long is basket, bao is basically Basically, it's dumplings. They come out in this little round thing, uh, usually with three or four or, you know, more if you ask for more. And you lift up the lid of the bamboo cover and it's just steaming and it smells so good. And inside, it's actually very hot. So the biggest mistake people make is to, oh, it smells so good. And then they put the whole thing into your mouth. But inside there is soup and that soup is boiling hot. So you definitely don't want to bite down on that. What you should do, so inside there's soup and like a clear broth. And then there's also usually a little bit of pork. Delicious. And outside is this fine dumpling wrapper. What you do, take your chopstick, put it on your spoon, let it sit. You know, maybe let it sit for 10 seconds or a little bit, let it cool down. And then what you do is you lift it up and from the side, you, you actually nip a little hole in it. So you bite a tiny little hole in it and then you lift it up and you drain it and you pour that clear broth drain into the spoon so it's all out. And then you let that cool, let that sit for a couple seconds. And then you drink that broth and then you can eat the dumpling. Because the problem is if, well, firstly, like I said, if you put the whole thing in your mouth, you will scald yourself. And secondly, if you bite halfway, you guess what? All that broth sauce is gonna get all over your top and it's gonna be really hot. So now, because you took out the soup, now when you bite it, there's no soup inside and you're not gonna make a mess. So you can slowly eat your way. Ta-da! All right, and now down to question number one. Da -da -da -da. ILVG asks, blowing your nose at the dinner table during a very spicy meal? That is a great question because we've all been there. I mean, I personally, I'm from Hong Kong, which considered is considered the southernmost tip of China, basically. And people from southern China, we like to eat sweet, more, more sweet tasting stuff. We don't like too heavy or too strong, especially not spicy. So I cannot handle spicy. I mean, if there's like a little bit of spicy, I like it, but I'm like crying and sniffing my way through the whole meal. So good question. We We've all been at the dinner table where we had something very spicy. Our nose immediately is sniffling. Well, this is what you do. In Chinese culture, people feel that blowing nose in front of other people is awkward, which it is because what if you have all that snot and stuff and everybody can kind of see your snot, it's kind of a mess. So then what a lot of Chinese people do is they'll sniff their way through the meal. They're like, and honestly, which is just terrible. So you don't want to do that. What you should do is you should excuse yourself to the restroom and blow your nose there, or just get a tissue. And when you blow your nose, blow your nose to the table, you know, turn turn to the side. Don't like lean forwards and blow your nose in front of anybody on the food. You turn to one side, very clearly turn to one side. And with your tissue, a little lesson on how to blow your nose, fold it in half and put it so that your nose is right in the middle of the tissue and blow in and try to blow into the middle, right? So you blow into the middle and that way you have, you you know, you can put your fingers, you have space to put your fingers also up into the tissue to also kind of, you know, pad your nostrils to make sure that there's no extra snot around and really wipe. And then that way, and then you just close it like this and you can do another one last little wipe if you want and then close it. And now the most important thing to remember when you blow your nose at the dinner table is do not put the offending tissue where people can see it. You fold it up, fold it up, fold it up, and then put it in your pocket, ideally because nobody can see it. Or if you're gonna put it on the table, put it underneath your plate. So under the rim of your plate, do not put it out, especially do not put it close to other people's food or other people's utensils, nowhere in sight. All right, guys, so those are my five dining etiquette tips for today. Please send me some more. Send them to me on YouTube in the comments below or on Instagram. DM me. I read every single one of your DMs. And send me any questions you have about etiquette at the dinner table or about anything else. All right, remember to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and stay tuned for the next one. See ya. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.